Well, good evening, Information Nation, and welcome to another episode of What Nobody Told Me After 65. It's your lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. You've reached the Information Nation, where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of a people. How are you? Get a good look here. I got a new hairdo. My cousin was here from New York. Hi, Willie. Fashionista extraordinaire. She's going to be doing um, the New York fashion um, walk that they do every year. And mwah, I love you. Um, and while she was here, she did my hair. She did my hair. Um, <laughs> new look. You have to change it up every now and then. And that's why I'm going to talk to you tonight about who's zooming who. <laughs> you remember that song? <laughs> yeah. Well, as the title would suggest, we have a dilemma. Who is zooming who? That was an Aretha Franklin song. What did it say? Say so you walked in on the sly, scoping for love in the crowd. I caught your eye. You can't hide your stuff. But you thought I'd be naive and tame. You met your match. I beat you at your own game. Who's zooming who? <laughs> I'm telling you. Do you know the person that you are zooming? The one you're in a relationship with. For those of you who don't know what zooming is. I still can't believe that we just listened to those kind of lyrics. And uh, and we got away with it. <laughs> so, do you still find him or her attractive? After a few years, you know, you get a little bored. Or are you ready to trade out? Now, I used to say trade up. But that phrase is highly speculative, <laughs> depending on who's doing the reporting, that is. Um, we like to think that we have um, that we have moved up. We like to think that when we leave a relationship, it is to move on to something or someone better. But hold your horses. That's not always the case. Have you ever heard of the Coolidge effect? Well, Calvin Coolidge was the 30th U.S. president. He was an attorney and a Republican politician. And he was known as Silent Cal. Now, the man barely said 10 words. <laughs> so, I wonder why he ever got into politics. I mean, if you're not vocal, if you're not outgoing, charismatic, if you can't shovel the poo-poo, <laughs> ah, you ain't got no business being in politics, my friend. But anyway, he was the 30th president, and um, the 29th president died unexpectedly in office, and, you know, that's how the story goes. Anyway. Once while he and his wife, and his wife was an attractive, beautiful, outgoing spirit. One um, recollection called her vivacious. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, they were out touring a chicken farm. That's not very romantic. Why they were touring a chicken farm, I don't know. But... Here's the story. Mrs. Coolidge noticed that the rooster was mating frequently with the hens. And she asked the guide, quote, how many times does he mate? The guide answered, dozens. And she replied, tell that to Mr. Coolidge. Upon hearing this exchange, the president asked, uh, is it each time with the same hen or a different one? The guy told him, each time with a different hen. 
Mr. Coolidge is quoted to have said, tell that to Mrs. Coolidge. <laughs> this became known in psychiatric circles and in psychology as the Coolidge effect. Really, as the Coolidge effect. One man, many partners, one woman, one partner. Hmm. It has been scientifically proven if you put a male rat in a cage with a receptive, now mind you, the key uh, or the operative word here is receptive, with a receptive female rat, he'll mate with her multiple times, several times, but soon he gets bored. They don't say she gets bored. He gets bored. If you swap that female out and put in a different female, voila, he is alive again. <laughs> He's back in the saddle again. Just by changing out the female. Although soon, you know, he's tired of her too. And you see the pattern here. In other words, males soon tire of relations with the same female, but are quickly aroused by a new female. In an experimental study conducted by Albright College's psychologist Susan Hughes, where 600 young adults, uh, consisting of roughly equal numbers of heterosexual men and women, so about 300 men and 300 women, and the experiment was set up similar to the dating app Tinder. Now, remember, we talked about this app in an earlier video, so if you don't remember Tinder, go back and pull the video. I think it was called the dating game or something. Anyway, in the experiment, these people were given uh, a series, a collection of photos of the opposite sex. So if it was men, they got pictures of women. If it was women, they got pictures of men. And they were told that they could choose to have sex with one time each up to 10 different partners. You understand what I'm saying? So you had photos. You could choose 10 people, 10 different people, and you can have sex with each of those 10 people once. Or you could have two partners. And you can have sex with those two partners five times each. Any combination, just as long as the number of encounters added up to 10. Not more, added up to 10. So, in line with the Coolidge effect. Remember I just told you about the Coolidge effect. The men selected more potential sex partners than the women. However, two very interesting phenomena occurred. Check this out. The women showed some evidence of the Coolidge effect <laughs> under certain conditions. And here's the conditions. The women allotted all 10 dates to only one or two men. However, when all the men were exceptionally attractive, the women showed an interest in dating more of them. Who knew? <laughs> this falls right in line with the evolutionary, um, with the evolution, with the evolutionary laws of human mating. That is, people engage in both long and short-term 
sexual relationships, but the qualities they seek in a partner depend on the type of relationship. Women tend to prefer resources. Show me the money. <laughs> Wealth and status. Overlooks when it comes to a long-term partner. So, wealth and status plays a big role for a long-term partner in a female's life. She don't care what you look like. I mean, she got some money. <laughs> That's sad. <coughs> However, as men grow older, their desire for multiple partners increases. And they also become less picky about looks. They don't care what you look like, baby. As long as you are young. Older men want more sexual variety than younger men. Do you agree with this? Any of this? Do you agree with any of this? Leave me a comment. Um, I think I have more female subscribers than I have males, but boy, I would love to hear from some of you guys out there because this is scientific. This is actually is scientific, but I'm, I'm getting ready to give you my opinion on this. So as people grow older, according to this study, this research, as people grow older and more experienced, they tend to have greater self-awareness of their own sexuality. Again, the fact that this uh, experiment was purely hypothetical, I believe the participants went out of their way, out of their comfort zone, to be a bit more free in their responses. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, the data is skewed and unreliable. But fun. It has been my experience that men, for the most part, are never satisfied. They're always the hunter, always on the lookout, even if they do not act on it. And conversely, I find women will consider, even if only briefly, a fling thing. That's what I'm calling it. But all the boxes have to be checked. All the pistons have to be firing on all cylinders, making a particularly hot environment. Everything got to be just right, just so, for a lady to act on an impulsive um, physical encounter, in my opinion. Let me know what you think. However, we are not dead. Okay, we're not dead yet, <laughs> but in today's climate, it pays to know who you are zooming. Things just aren't the same. Anytime the hunter gets captured by the game, things just ain't the same. Anytime the hunter gets captured by the game. That used to be a song, too. And I didn't understand what I was singing back then. We were young. But I know now. And <laughs> if you don't know, you better ask somebody. At this stage of the game, at, at over 65, if you don't know by now, I guess you just ain't going to know. You know what I'm saying? This has been a heck of a year. We are more than three quarters of the way through it. And September is a coming. November is a coming. Ah, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to try to keep up with you guys. Try to keep up with me. Let's keep this uh, conversation going. Let's get this dialogue going because you don't know what you don't know. Take care.